Dick Cheney and Kamala Harris are painted as two faces of the same neocon coin, their actions shaped by the intertwined forces of financial and military power. Tucker Carlson's sharp critique, claiming that both figures push for pointless wars and chase economic gain, reflects a broader suspicion of the political elite's true motivations. His argument is less about race or gender and more about the ethical failings of those in power. The phrase, enriching themselves at the cost of young men's blood, underscores a conservative disdain for leaders who prioritize personal or financial interests over the lives of citizens and soldiers. Cheney's criticism of those who are never truly Republican hints at the idea that political loyalties are often driven by self-serving calculations rather than sincere belief in a cause. In this view, alliances and allegiances are mere tools for strategic gain rather than a reflection of genuine principles. What they actually care about is the ability to continue to fight pointless wars because that's where all the money is. That's where all the money is. And if you don't believe it, maybe you haven't checked your phone today to see that Dick Cheney and his horrible daughter have endorsed Kamala Harris. Dick Cheney. Now, why is that? What does Dick Cheney have in common with Kamala Harris? And it's really interesting, actually, because they're constantly telling us that the divides are along race and gender. And they were always telling us Rick, Dick Cheney is this rich white guy and Kamala Harris is this oppressed woman of color. They've got nothing in common. But actually, they have everything in common. Beca because they're both neocons. That's exactly right. They have everything in common. And it tells you what a lie this race and gender stuff is. That's not the divide. The divide is in your heart. And if you think it's okay to kill people in order to get rich, you're on their side. And if you don't, you're on our side, no matter what you look like. Tucker Carlson's critique touches on the psychological tension between personal morality and systemic corruption, highlighting the struggle to remain authentic in a political world rife with deception. Public anger centers on the hypocrisy and self-interest of elites bringing into focus a deep concern for the integrity of the political system itself. What emerges is a narrative about the moral conflict in navigating a corrupt political landscape and the urgent need for individual authenticity and ethical clarity. Carlson's analysis probes into the deeper layers of political power, questioning not just policies, but also the morality, identity, and personal responsibility of those who shape them. In doing so, he brings to light how political discourse is intertwined with issues of identity, integrity, and the manipulation of power.